In this video, we want you we want to get started with using uh, notebooks, uh, specifically Python notebooks, and we want to use the Google framework, uh, which is called Collab Notebooks. So go to your favorite search engine, type Google Collab Notebook, and that brings us to a number of different choices. I'm going to pick the collab.research.google.com, which I'm familiar with. <clears throat> this brings me to a welcome to collab notebook, uh, which you can you can sort of listen to, um, or you can go here and just say file new Python three notebook, which is really the focus of what we want to do here. And so, in the collab notebooks, you can do um, anything, almost anything you can do in Python. Um, and so I'm just going to go over a couple of different things. I want to go over just just so you're familiar with this. This is everything runs on your web browser. I'm using Chrome uh, because this is a Google product. And I tried using um, Microsoft Edge and that gave me an error before. So I'm, I'm going over to Chrome and using that. Just like uh, most typical Windows applications, you see at the top you have a, a you know options and menu. Um, <clears throat> oh, that I must have clicked something. Let me click back on new, new. Oh, what did I do? Let me just go back one second here. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> so I can um, so two things I can do. I can add text and I can add code. And this item right here is code. Um, and so it says cell has not been executed in this session. So when I actually type my code and I could say, um, name equals input, what is your name? Okay. That does nothing. It, it doesn't run my command. It doesn't do anything. I can actually add more code. So I can add more code and say print name. And I actually don't know if this works. So let me actually run this. So I can, it has a little pop up that says run cell control enter. So this command is saying name equals input. What is your name? Let's see what that does. So I'm going to press control enter. <clears throat> Let's see if that actually works. So what it does is it actually gives you a prompt to say, what is your name? And I can type my name and say, Antonio, enter. And that's all it does because that's all that line of code does. So I can say print name and then print one, two, three. If you imagine, this is how we print. So I'm going to go print name, print one, two, three. <clears throat> so and and if you're following our uh, tic-tac-toe program making you you realize that we talked about doing three things and we've done them all in about uh, one minute first thing we talked about is storing a variable so i've taken that variable in this case my variable is name and i've actually stored the result antonio in there uh, now, what you'll realize is that I use the function, right? And if I hover over this, it'll tell me what this function is. And this read a string from standard input. And the prompt string, if given, is printed to standard output without a trailing new line before reading input. So basically, it's going to give me a prompt is what the input function does in Python 3. And that's exactly what it did. It gave me a prompt which use what is your name? And then once I entered my name, it stored my name into this field name. Okay. What I did in the next one is I, I printed my name. Then I printed one, two, three. So it prints whatever name I, I've given it. Then I print one, two, three. I can also add text. So I can go ahead and add text. And I can actually move the text up and down. So on the right side here, you see that I have a 
few different options, but I'm going to go ahead and move my text up. And I, I can sort of describe my program in the text here. So I'm going to double click this to edit. I'm going to say, ask user for input for their name. Okay. And that's it. So that becomes text. Okay. Now I'm going to add more, more text. And so here I'm going to say, bring this down sometimes. Sometimes it allows you to um, just click and drag, but this time it doesn't. I'm going to edit this, double click and say, print the name uh, entered by the user. And you see when I'm typing text on the right hand side, it actually g it gives me what it's going to look like. So I can, so if I, if I make this bold, for instance, we can immediately see what it's going to look like. And so this gives us, oh, I moved that down, but this gives us a great platform uh, for trying new things, um, uh, trying new code, learning code. Um, it gives us the ability to actually enter code and here be dynamic about it, right? I'm used, I'm I'm grabbing some user input uh, and I'm doing something with it. Um, I can probably do a lot more, uh, but but this is a, a, a great first step. I can do something like, let's say, I can add a piece of code. So I'm going to add a piece of code. And let's see, I'm going to ask for the user's last name. So, um, what is your last name, right? So we're, so that name up there is probably, we should have named it first name, but let's name this last name equals to, I'm going to use that same function input, right? Which we know. And, and if we don't know, it's going to pop up here and I'm going to say, what is your last name? Okay. And I'm not going to run that yet. Because once I get their last name, I want to print. So what I'm going to print is your, uh, I'm going to print your name is, and I'm going to do last name plus name. So if you can imagine what I'm going to ask for is I'm now I'm going to ask for the last name and let me actually do comma. So I'm going to ask for the last name and then I'm actually going to print to the screen. Your name is last name, comma, first name or name, what I've taken above. So let's go ahead and run this cell here. And it tells me you have a syntax error. And so I really wanted to show you what this looks like, right? Um, so this means uh, we've talked about syntax before. It's the language, right? This language is it's expecting something when we're not providing it. In this case, you see, I'm giving it a string and I'm saying that string and or plus the last name plus a comma. And then I'm missing a plus here. So go ahead and change that. And let me go ahead and rerun this. What is your last name? So I will go and type my last name. Your name is Borges Antonio. Okay, well, uh, I prefer space there. I can do that. And that's fine. Um, I can rerun that and see what happens. Perfect. Right. So this gives us an idea of how to use, how to start saving some variables, print them out, how to ask the user for input, uh, and how to use uh, the collab notebooks. The last thing I would do is just save this and say, um, testing, uh, saving variable. 
obtaining user input and printing variable to screen. And so that's it. I'm done with this um, with this uh, notebook. Uh, so this is a good start. Try to get some more user input. Uh, as you can imagine, in, in the tic-tac-toe program we're going to work on, we're going to want to ask the user where they want to specify uh, their X or O. Um, so that's going to be a key uh, input there, um, the, or the position of where they're actually going to mark their X or O. So think about that when you're thinking about um, how many decisions we need to make for, for a game like tic-tac-toe.